my name is Amar. Um, I'm with Flipkart engineering team. Um, like it. So when Jainab actually reached out to me um, asking whether I, I would like to talk about this, honestly, for a second, I thought it, it's a bad idea. Right? I mean, going in front of the community and talking about this. And then when I started having these converse conversations with the leadership team in Flipkart, almost everybody in the leadership said, what is there to hide? Let's go and talk out in public what is that we actually went through before we made the call. Otherwise, people will actually start talking about it. I mean, it's better we talk about it than people actually saying that you, you don't have heart for web. So we decided, yes, let's talk about it. And before I go any further into the talk, I want to make this thing very, very clear. OK? So, pun intended, no pun intended, I'm not making any comments. So this is one more thing I want to make very, very clear. This talk is actually not any gospel preaching about what you should be doing with your mobile property, whether you should kill your mobile apps or mobile site or whether you should only go with mobile apps. You know what? There is no silver bullet to this. And if somebody is actually telling you that you should have your mobile site no matter what, without knowing your product in depth, that's equally bullshit as somebody actually saying you should only have mobile site or you should only have apps. So it truly boils down to your use case. And I'm actually going to take you guys through our learnings, our findings, in fact, some of the work we did in this space before we realized, OK, this is, this is it. OK? Why would anyone hate web, right? I mean, why would anyone have not have heart for web. Very honestly, this is the, uh, the stack that actually opened up internet to every human being on this earth. Right? I mean, there are two fundamental things I really, really like about web, which actually impacted both sides of the spectrum. The consumer. This is probably the first and probably the best one till date, which actually lowered the bar uh, for entry into a property like no other medium ever did. We still, we still see people discovering Flipkart on web more than on Play Stores or on uh, app, app Stores. In fact, this is the reason why there are a lot of billion dollar companies. In fact, the first billion dollar companies came from this space. This other uh, thing that we really like about web is the rapid experimentation. As developers, we always wanted it. Right? We, we really wanted to test out the stuff that we are building. We really wanted to put in front of our customers to learn their feedback as early as we can so that we can actually move fast and do stuff that really makes an impact. So then why? Right? So this is something we heard again. Apparently, we love app development. Trust me, we don't. And uh, is it fair to ask how many app developers are in this room? Wonderful. So at least I can connect to a few in this room. If this was actually said by Facebook, think of startups, right? Uh, people who've been actually doing the app development will actually know the pain of releasing an app, especially on platforms like iOS, where you go through an approval policy. Uh, it takes anywhere between five to seven days to even hear a word from Apple saying that, hey, your app is okay, or your app, we're going to reject it. And that resets your whole planning again. And that's one part of the pain. The other part of the pain is you release the app, and you actually pray for your customers to update your app so that they see the goodness. This was never an issue in the web world. We deploy the new changes, and boom. Everybody got the same thing, regardless of where they're coming from, what kind of device they had, what kind of internet they had, right? The other problem um, that we faced a lot in the app development is the device fragmentation. At least in the web world, the perception has been like, okay, I'll build for this handful of browsers to make it work, and then the browser will actually abstract me from the, the OS uh, that's running on the phone. In fact, that is not true. That is what we've learned the hard way. But in the app development space, um, the last known number of the number of unique devices 
Android device, I'm just talking about Android, that exist in the market are 18,796. It's almost impossible for any company to get all these devices under one roof. Even if they say they get all these devices, it's humanly impossible to test on all these devices. So we, in fact, actually took a different route to handle, address this problem outside of the scope of this meeting, but it was a huge learning for us. The fundamental difference between apps and the web, apps are disconnected. I mean, the, the, the beauty of the web is it's, it's so connected. You can actually seamlessly go from one website to the other, and the context is never lost. Unfortunately, in the app space, it's not true. In fact, uh, apps are so siloed, uh, there are actually companies coming up to connect these two things. In a way, it's a good thing because somebody is trying to solve the problem. The, the bad part about this thing is there is no open standard for apps to connect to each other. And that actually had so many consequences on a lot of things we did. Sorry. The fundamental ways of discovery for our consumers have always been the search engines, right? And with the app only thing, these are of no use to us. Literally, I mean, you can't actually search for Flipkart on your mobile device uh, for any product on Flipkart. Well, we are actually, again, trying to solve the problem in a different way, but that is something we didn't have to solve on the web world. It was, it was so fundamentally there when we embraced this thing. In fact, this is actually causing a lot of paradigm shift. I'm not sure what's happening. Okay. It's, in fact, um, causing a lot of paradigm shift in terms of how your consumers are, are discovering you. It's the Play Stores. And unfortunately, these Play Stores are actually controlled by the very same people who are building these platforms. Again, I can talk about it in length about what is the problem of actually having the same guys own these stores but again, outside of the scope of the problem. But this, I, there is one thing I really want to talk about uh, that happened because of this shift. You like it or not, your app is actually becoming your brand. Whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, too early to say, but there's one thing I can definitely say. Flipkart is one of the very few companies who was actually hit by this. So this one-star ratings, I don't have to introduce you guys to this one-star ratings. We got that in a matter of three days. Say we, we were live for 18 months. Our one-star ratings were like 7,800 or something. In three days, that was the count. So people are actually using your app store or your app store presence as a voice to not only get heard, but get count. So, I really haven't made a case so far to help myself here, right? So what is that um, thing that happened which actually made us move this, make this huge move, right? What we started noticing, I mean, we've been a desktop company for seven years. I mean, all our uh, brain share, all our thought process, everything has been desktop. So it actually took us a while for us to um, realize that there is this smart little thing which is actually changing uh, something underneath us. There is a paradigm shift that started happening. Mobile actually brought a behavioral change. How many of you actually stopped taking notes in a meeting and started taking a picture of your whiteboard? Right? How many of you actually told your last time, I mean, told apps like Ola or Uber um, where you were? You didn't have to. Your app actually knows where you are. Right? And again, orientations and all of it. I don't know how many of actually um, here use Siri. I actually use it a lot um, to set my alarms, to check my messages when I'm driving. In fact, even reply to my SMS. So yeah, there has been a lot of shift happening without even us realizing the kind of impact this is going to have on our behavior. Sorry. This is when we realized, hey, what is web actually doing on mobile? We're still asking for those text field entries for a lot of data that we were collecting on mobile. I mean, there's one more thing, right? I mean, it's not just entirely the web, it's the browser too. In fact, web community has been very active in bridging the gap between the native and uh, the web world. It's this browser that is the culprit here. 
it's, I mean, it's quite ironic to even think of the fact that your browser is also an app. And the app that doesn't actually have the same kind of um, the namespace permissions or whatever you need to make uh, the experience richer for your customer. So you're actually, you're writing this beautiful code and you're literally praying for your browser to do the magic for you. In fact, this is the reason why, um, I don't know how many of you were able to read it. I said we don't hate the web, but the picture I wanted to convey the message, it's not the web we hate, it's these browser apps we hate. Right, I mean, I was here yesterday and there was a question uh, from the audience where people actually asked, is it fair to ask our customers to actually install a different browser so that they can actually have a better experience on our site? In fact, we're doing the same. We're asking you to install the app, which is our app, where we control everything, and get a better experience. Anyway, I'll get to uh, where I'm coming from in the later part of my discussion. This is something I actually uh, pulled up from Quicks mode. I mean, I. I'm pretty sure nobody in this room need introduction to this website, right? And I pulled up just two uh, matrices, the two things that are very fundamental to mobile, the touch compatibility and orientation compatibility across the known existing mobile browsers. These are only a handful, right? I mean, the list is growing, but these are a handful. What actually worries me is not the red and greens. What actually worries me is that uh, red box which actually says incorrect which means the browsers are not even recognizing some of the events. So this, this, is, this is where we actually started wondering, how much are we going to rely on this browser to make this experience seamless for our customer? In fact, that is when we identified what are those core things we need to make the experience better on a mobile site. These are four of a big list that we came up with. And uh, I mean, these are the, the quintessential weapons you need to have in your archery to actually ha uh, address some of the problems, at least. Asynchronous rendering, again, I don't have to tell you guys. Um, there's no threading in web. I mean, more than happy to learn if stuff changed from the last time I checked. I'm not a web developer, honest confession. Local cache policies. The kind of sophistication you can build into your local caching to make the experience seamless regardless of the network you're on, unfortunately cannot be done yet. Access to native elements. This is, this is actually an interesting thing. While, while the actually web is making progress to uh, access these native elements, there is still a fundamental difference between the quality of access. I'll actually show you an example right after this. And then there are client optimizations. There are tons of optimizations we are actually building on the apps today. Uh, one, one example is um, the data that doesn't have to reach us in real time. There's always two sets of data, the data that has to reach us in real time and the data that doesn't have to reach you in real time. What we have done with that kind of data is we're actually batching it up on the app and only sending it to our servers when you're on Wi-Fi and the phone is getting charged. If for seven days you don't do this, we only send a summary and ignore the rest of the data. Again, there are a lot of things we can do on that, on that device, unfortunately uh, not able to do it on the web. So this is one example I was talking about. I went to a Facebook M site, their mobile site, tried to check in, and it thinks I'm actually 0.4 miles from Kodai Canal. And I have all the uh, sensors that needs to be on. My Wi-Fi, my location, uh, my GPS, everything is on. It, it still thinks I'm 0.4 miles from Kodai Canal. That's not it. If you see the second result, it's actually Bangalore South Campus, Pesit College. I don't know when this environmental shift happened that Kodai Canal actually came close to Bangalore. But if you actually see that on the uh, app, I mean, I'm there. I'm in HSR, so I live there. So there is difference in how the web is actually accessing the native elements versus the, the native platforms. And this is not entirely the web's thing. In fact, the, the native platform owners are also making it tough for the web to actually do the same kind of uh, accessibility uh, with, the, with the native components. So we thought all about it. So we, I mean, this was a, 
a very long exercise that we went through. In fact, uh, the team sitting here, right, um, they went through a very painful journey of figuring out the problem statement and then trying to address the problem. So, yeah, did we even have a heart to solve this? Yeah, we tried. We didn't give up before trying. In fact, these two were the most ambitious projects we uh, undertook in our web development. Lynchpin, single page web app, somebody was actually talking about yesterday, planning on doing it, we actually did it 18 months ago. Uh, it's rich, faster experience. Um, in fact, we had support for non-JS browsers. When we were hit by JS, non-JS browsers, long time before. It, it's actually fully compatible with non-JS browsers. And when you make it as a single page web app, right? I mean, you're hit by the SEO compatibility. In fact, the team came up with a way to address that also. They're using Node.js to compose pages on the server end to address some of these issues. And then we came up with a front end JS where we did a heavy web, web app. In fact, this is the app that came closest to a native feeling um, in all of the things we've ever did. In fact, uh, you can actually check with one of these guys. They have it running on their phone. Um, if you're in a good network connectivity, this app actually feels like it's a native app. Yes, this shit is native. So we did all of this, and then right when we thought we approached a milestone, the native platforms actually took a leapfrog. So we did this repeatedly. We finally realized it's always going to be a catch-up game, right? We, a simple example, right? I mean, how many of you actually have a mobile site which, are, which is basically native to the platform? Sorry, do I see a rise of hands? And th the reason why I'm asking this question is, there's so much of learning and unlearning that has to happen if I have to switch from a native app to a mobile site and a mobile site to native app. The best thing that can happen to me as a customer is if my mobile site also starts actually doing the same thing that my app is doing in terms of my look and feel, in terms of my navigation flows, in terms of what this right click is, uh, the right drawer is going to do. And all of this was actually, re I mean, we tried to solve all of the problems and it was reset when platforms like Android introduced a new design philosophy. And iOS keeps on doing it, every two releases. So, this was the hardest part of our journey. In fact, it was more harder for these guys because they've put I don't know how many uh, months of nights to solve these problems. In fact, we still believe that we can solve this problem, but we need more help from the community. In fact, we're going to open source these projects. We will still continue to work on it. We need your help to actually solve some of the problems. And as far as the, uh, all the information around these projects, you can meet to the team here for being the brains behind this. So, here's a funny story I want to share. Uh, again, remember my disclaimer, okay? Somebody said they've solved it. They've actually solved it such that they don't have to worry about the experience between their app and the mobile site. I said, yeah, this is fine. I mean, yes, my guys have done a terrific job of actually figuring out the problem statement and trying to solve it, but more than happy to actually learn that somebody has actually solved it. So we, I personally decided to give it a try. So I went to this mobile site, typed in my phone number, picked my carrier, picked my recharge plan, I was taken to the next screen, where it actually asked me to log in. I don't understand why I have to actually identify myself when I'm trying to recharge a phone number that I already gave on the previous screen, fine. Maybe you want to tell your investor how many accounts you have? Fine with me. So I use the easier option, social login, right? Clicked on the Facebook thing. This is what happened. I don't know if you guys can read this. It actually says, uh, unsupported browser. Google Chrome for iOS does not support this feature. Please use Safari and try again. What this basically means is I cannot use my favorite browser to do a, whatever I want to do on your mobile site. And this is exactly what we've been talking for long. You're at the mercy of a browser which you do not have any control over. So are you going to ask your user to go to Safari and do it? If that is the case, then I might as well ask them to go to the app and do it. Which is what we did. 
So there are a couple of things we actually want to make it very clear. This, these are the things actually learnings we learned within the company and feel free to take it if it applies to you. Accessibility should not be confused to experience. Just because I can access a property doesn't mean the customer is happy with it. Right? And the most important design philosophy we go with in Flipkart, design is not about how it looks. I really don't want all kinds of flashy animations going on my property if it cannot do the basic thing. It's all about how it works. So yeah, we said, end of the day, it's a customer experience that matters. And if we cannot guarantee the same kind of experience on a medium, which is typically controlled by somebody who we don't even know, we might as well do this. So yeah, we did it. What happened next, or what is actually happening now? Like I said, we haven't turned off our uh, work on the web space. We are still continuing to do uh, what we think we can to fix this problem. Until then, we didn't want our customer to pay the price. In fact, some of the things we are doing is bringing the best of two worlds together. Web always gave us the agility, whereas the native is actually giving the best experience to my customer. Why don't we bring it together? Right? Um, this is happening. But we believe that's probably not the right way to do it. You're trying to bring the experience to a, a web world. Instead, let's take the web agility to the native world. And I'm sure pretty, I mean, most of you guys actually know Facebook is actually heading in this direction. And we believe it's the right direction too. So, I want to show you a, a simple video of a feature that is going to go live in a couple of weeks. Um, I wish I could actually demo this now, but uh, it's, it's, it's basically uh, still going through our user acceptance testing, so please bear with me on the video. This is actually something we did on the app, and I'll actually speak after this video is done. So these are all very native to the, the, the platform. Let's see the controls, but... That's yeah, stopped. Anyway, the point was... Uh, there's some problem with the video playing on the keynote. It's actually pausing at some time and I can't see the controls. There was not a single line of native code in it. In fact, it was all written in JS. Like I said, you're trying to bring the best of this world here. The agility that it actually gave us in doing this is, is actually immense. We started it out as an experimentation project. We are actually happy it turned out to be much better than what, it, what we thought it would be. In fact, um, the point that I was, wanted to um, make with those input entry was how your app was transforming to the type of data you were entering in and how those um, data entry options are so native uh, to your platform. So yeah, this is all I have to say. Happy to take questions. Feel free to... Uh, tweet to me on anything you would like to know about this. My team is actually here uh, who worked on some of these things. In fact, I would like to take a moment to thank them. Can you, pl can you guys please stand up? So I want to thank them for embracing this, this paradigm shift. I mean, it, it was a very tough conversation when, when we started talking to these people. And thanks to their maturity, thanks to the, the big picture they could see, they actually said, yes, we can solve it. Let's, let's solve it on this space. So yes, thank you guys. So yeah, open to questions. Hello? Yeah, I have a question. 
sorry yeah yes so uh, in the last the last example that you showed so could you actually tell us about uh, what technologies were you using for um, bring was it like react native or it is react we okay. are also working on react native but this mm -hmm. is not react native As this okay. is react and to know more about this, I would be the wrong person to actually talk okay. about it. Like I said, these guys would be available after this talk also. Mm -hmm. You can actually get in touch with them to talk in detail about okay. it. Okay, cool. I thought there was going to be a bloodbath. Hey, yeah. So you were mentioning about, you asked us whether any of us had websites that, had na that look native or work native, sure. right? I think the, pro the mistake that you're making is that you're assuming that a web app or a website needs to be native. Think of it as a platform. You have three platforms. Sure. You're working on iOS, sure. on Android, on Windows Phone. Think of the web as a platform with its own advantages and disadvantages. So you're looking at certain uh, disadvantages or certain restrictions that, we, that are there on, on the web. You're forgetting the many advantages that are there and you're ignoring them. Actually, if that was what I said, then I was wrong. In fact, we are realizing the best part of the web world uh, more than ever. In fact, uh, to answer your particular question, it's not us who are actually seeing it. We are actually coming in from the customer perspective. A customer will highly unlikely will have an Android and iOS phone. He's actually used to one kind of platform. And the pretty native uh, navigation that you get out of the device is what he would expect on everything he sees on that device, which is where we are coming from. For us, we were actually having a PHP stack that was serving our website, and there was one more that was serving our mobile site, there was one more that was serving non-JS. We didn't have problem. We, in fact, wanted to actually do all of this. It's the customer who actually said, I have so much of unlearning to do when I go to this thing, and so much of learning to do when I go back to your app. But you're us. Okay, to, for this point of yours, sure. uh, there is, if a person has an app on the phone, uh, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't see a reason why he would at all go to the web, to the browser, mm. and use it. For a person who does not have the app on the phone, he does not know what the app, how the app works. Sure. I was actually not talking about a Flipkart app. I was talking about any native app that comes with your phone. Facebook, the, WhatsApp, okay. whatever. Then to that, one more point to that is a person who is using the browser, he, he's browsing thousands of websites or hundreds of websites. Sure. Those websites do not work in the same way. The controls, the design language of those websites are not following any particular platform. So he is used to the fact that when he browses through the, webs, uh, through the browser, the uh, software that he is using uh, is not going to look and work the same as the rest of the OS. This is exactly what we thought for two years. This is, this is when we actually started talking to the real customer. In fact, one of the data points that I would like to share with is there is this, um, uh, the Garner report that we get from uh, a company called Garner every year, and there was one interesting fact that we actually learned about it. Like the 70% of the population who are going to come online this year, uh, for the very first time in their life, are only going to come on their smartphone. So they've actually not seen the desktop world. And they're probably their browser usage might be limited to news articles. We don't know, but what we've heard from our customers is there's so much of learning and unlearning to do. In fact, this is a comment that I've heard from my mom it's herself. Like she said, Okay, why is your site so different from your app? I mean, that's strictly in terms of Flipkart context, but basically the point we were trying to make is your user is expected to learn certain things when he onboards onto a device on an Android platform. I don't know how frequently people change their platforms um, from Android to iOS, so you're pretty much getting geared towards learning a particular platform. And the moment you get something in between which is totally not talking the same language, there is a learning curve. And that, we think, is a bad experience. Again, this is what we have learned. And like I said in the beginning, this is not actually preaching anyone here that this is what you should be doing. Our customers said this, and we listened to it. Um, here, over here. Sorry. I, um, I guess I'll frame this question in a more positive and optimistic light. Um, Thank you. There's a lot of stuff happening in browsers. Uh, in web standards right now, um, even though, you know, in your opinion, it's uh, always playing catch up, but um, there are a few things which are going on which are very interesting. For example, service workers uh, in which you can make things offline, you know, push notifications, yes. uh, web notifications. 
and also add to home screen, that kind of stuff is also being um, considered yep. with browsers. In fact, so, uh, so my sorry, question is, um, will you, once these web standards, once, once these things are implemented in browsers, which probably match your uh, use cases or core use cases, then would it be possible for you guys to switch back to the web or open back to the web? Wonderful question. In fact, I forgot to mention, you mentioned that. The app that I was talking about, the one that we built a heavy web app, used all of those things, in fact. Uh, it still didn't meet the bar, but yes. When the web is there, we will be the first people to uh, actually put our hands up and say, hey, we're switching back. Like I said, this is nothing to do with the web or a particular technology or with the developers or anything. In fact, we are hiring more web developers than before. We want this problem to be solved. We want this problem to be solved. And we are actually fortunate enough to be placed in um, ecosystem, both uh, from the investment perspective and from the traction we are getting. We are one of the better people to actually solve this problem. Right? Yes. Answer to your question is yes. Hi. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm kind of confused uh, between Harish talk yesterday and yours. It's kind of contrary, isn't it? Uh, that's, so That's the reason why I had a disclaimer. <laughs> Right. Uh, so, so here's my take on it. Sure. Uh, so you're saying that you have a, a heavy web app, right? Uh, we did yeah. for so, a while, yes. So um, one of the things, right, as, as a user, you're talking about user experience. I'm a user. I'm having an Android phone. Probably not the best Android phone. Sure. So I don't have enough memory. Uh, yes. I can't have one Flipkart, one Amazon, one Mintra, one Jabong, one Yupmi, and so on. Fair point. OK, right. So if I get a better offer in Yupmi, I'll, I'll probably go buy Yupmi, right? Wonderful. But then, yeah. but then what if Yupmi is saying, go to my app, right? Uh, I can't download like uh, a dozillions of uh, apps, right? So what if you could have something like, uh, you, you talked about heavy app. Um, your Flipkart, the actual native app, is probably 20 MB to download. What if you can have a download button uh, and cache all the resources uh, and have a web app? Wonderful question. I was actually planning to bring this up somehow, and somebody asked the question. Thank you. So two things here. Like, uh, first thing is we don't actually me measure our success by the number of app installs. That's a theory floating around. We really don't care about it. End of the day, I mean, we are in a situation where we know what we should be doing. We should not actually be worried about competition. Thankfully. Second thing is, yes, a um, lot of things that I mentioned as a problem in the native app development, um, the release cycles where th there is an install, and even for the update, you literally have to wait for the customer to update to see this. We are actually solving those problems. Uh, we are working very closely with Google. We are working closely with Apple to actually see how we can push the content, just like how the web used to be, uh, using a very light client on the device, um, bypassing the app stores. I mean. That's by itself is a, a very lengthy topic. More than happy to take it offline. Uh, more than happy to even talk about it in a different forum. But yes, we are working towards it. But this is what the limitation at this point of time. And this is the price we're actually asking our customers to pay um, to have a better experience. In fact, I don't want to make it any more controversial, but in fact, this is where our Airtel Zero thing came from. We wanted to save this for our customers. But again, reverted today. Not taking questions on Airtel Zero, please. <laughs> yes. Hello. Uh, you've been mentioning uh, multiple times that um, you're listening to your real customers and hearing them out. Yes. Um, I've been a real customer of Flipkart since it was uh, just selling books. Yes. Uh, I've been using the mobile version of Flipkart as well. Uh, what I recall is that most of the times I'll do the switch to desktop version, or I'll turn that feature off of my browser so that it recognizes me as a desktop user. Uh, I'm just going back to it's difficult. Uh, it's difficult a problem to crack uh, to give similar experiences um, to a mobile user and the web user. Um, as a customer, I like the native experience much better than the uh, web experience I was getting on my mobile. Uh, so, so I'm in agreement with that. As a technologist, um, I'll again be a little balanced here. I think there are multiple options that technologists can go for. Uh, most of the reasons I've seen a company or an organization chooses native, uh, despite having a lot of trade-offs of supporting multiple devices, multiple versions of them, um, 
multiple code bases is almost primarily the customer experience. Um, at the same time, we're probably uh, sure not helping the web standards or the browsers catch up. But ultimately, it's just the organization's prerogative, which I think as technologists, we'll have to go either way uh, based on the context. I, uh, so, so it's more of a commentary, sorry. <laughs> sure, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a good comment. I mean, in fact, when, when this whole thought process started, uh, our founders are engineers. Like, right? They are technologists. And it was a hard call for them also. We went through a lot of um, soul searching. I mean, we did a lot of introspection. And I want to tell you one thing. I don't know how much time I have, but I want to actually, uh, do I have time? Cool. So um, I don't know how many of you actually followed uh, the news about Flipkart recently. We've transformed ourselves into a true marketplace play, right? Our, our mission at this point of time is to actually connect a consumer to a seller uh, who is going to give you the best value for money, preferably from a local location, so that your SLAs are intact. And most importantly, expose these small, medium businesses, which were never having the same shot as the big brands because of whatever the marketing dollars they had. We are we're trying to level the, uh, the ground for everyone. And in that process, what we have actually realized is if we go down the path of what we've been doing, instead, even today, our app is not truly really helping that cause. In fact, we are doing a lot of transformation um, on our apps to really expose it. So there are tons of, of features coming up on our app, uh, which we believe um, we couldn't give a similar experience on the web, which is the reason why we made this call before we introduced these features. We didn't want the customers to actually say, why are you giving me a downgraded experience on a mobile site? I have equal right to actually access all parts of your pro property or the site. So this is why we made the call. Yes, as a technologist, like I said, we haven't actually um, stopped working on web. In fact, this video is a, a very true testament of what this team was able to like, pull off in literally three months. When did we start the discussion? Three, four months, right? On this native part. Yes, three, four months. And uh, in fact, our guys are working closely with Facebook uh, on a lot of these things. So yeah, I mean, we are equally committed to the web. We want web to be as rich as native. I mean, like I said in the beginning, mobile has slowed us down. I mean, it, it has literally slowed everybody down. As a business and as a developer, I want my feature to go out to the customer as quickly as I can, as it can. So yes. Okay, we hi, share. Amar. Uh, one question, I sure. think this will be useful. You said that you're listening to your customers and the customers are giving you feedback. I just want to know how do you research this or how do you get customer feedback, what are the different avenues sure. for which you're collecting it, how you're going, it's like personal interviews, is it uh, just data, how, how, what are the processes in this? So we have a dedicated team in-house which, whose only job is to actually travel, travel and see the people. And this actually happens with every new feature we release, every major decision we make, because data wins arguments. Uh, sometimes common sense do, but mostly data wins arguments. <laughs> uh. No references, uh -huh. but yeah. So we have a dedicated team who goes travel across the board, talks to different kinds of demographics. We even talk to people who are in our future market, like tier two, tier three cities, help them help understand what is that these people are expecting from us. So this is tons of data. This data, uh, this team actually aggregates, collates, and presents it to the leadership team. Yeah, they go and talk to real people. Yes. I have a uh, one question. Sure. I have a question about your solution. I didn't quite follow Sorry, what question about what? Sorry? Your solution to the problem of supporting so many. Yes. Uh, this native app is actually like a web view in which you're loading your own pages. Am I yes. right? This at, at this point of time, it's a web view, yes. And this would be loading, uh, this particular web view is provided by the native DOM, native uh, API of that particular platform, which is whether it's uh, Android or iOS. Sure. So the version that, um, I mean, I don't understand how you solved anything given that you, that medium also faces the exact same problem of rendering anything in the browser. Thank you for reminding me one more point. <laughs> this is the problem when you actually keep making slides till 9.30 this morning. I didn't have a script to go by. Uh, one, of the, one of the other ambitious projects we are working on is to actually introduce our own browser, browser component. In fact, one of the thought processes that we went through during this journey was, should we actually do our own browser so that we control the experience? It's no different from actually asking your customers to download a browser versus a download an app. So what we actually decided, do a hybrid approach, app and a browser component. 
And it's not actually new. If you actually notice, Facebook app has their own in-app browser. Twitter started doing it. Almost every app started doing this because they do not want to be at the mercy of a browser which they do not control. So answering to your question, no, it's not completely the, the native thing. But right now you do suffer the problem that you set out to solve. Sorry. Even though you're on native, even though you're on a native app, yes. you do handle the issues that you would otherwise face in a mobile web. Yes, we haven't solved completely. I'm sorry if I've said that. We haven't solved the problem completely. We, have, we believe we are heading in the right direction. And we believe the okay. problem statements that we've encountered were the right problems. And we're heading in the right direction. So yes, the browser is something we are trying to inject into the app. Uh, but what we have tried, actually, what we have solved with this particular uh, demo that um, you guys just saw is a seamless interaction between the native and the, the JS code. So a lot of stuff that native actually provides, uh, like the stuff that I was talking about, asynchronous rendering, local caching policies, and all of that, that's actually taken care of by a native framework, like the native code. Whereas this, uh, the page that you saw is, a, a, yes, it's a web view. But okay. like I said, our exercise is to actually bring best of both worlds together as much as we can. I would think this last point would have been a huge meat of your argument, but somehow it didn't come across. So just feedback. Sure. Thank you. Uh, one question here. Here. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so your entire talk and like the decisions based on it be, uh, are like depend on one fact that one uh, reasoning that uh, you want experience, and by experience, the most of the animations and the features that are there in a mobile app that you can get on a mobile app, you want, uh, like you couldn't get that in a mobile web page. But what if I don't want all these features? Like Actually, I don't I, want- I never said it's animations. In fact- No, not animations. Made, you said it's not animations, but you it's mentioned- It's not what it looks, it's how it works. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so you were saying that uh, like you wanted a lot of features that are, that are were not possible on a mobile website. Sure. And that's why you transition. But what if, as a, as a user, I don't want all the features? Like, I don't so want my location detected. I don't want my, I can type in my PIN code if I want the uh, in a day feature done. Sure. Which you already have, by the way. Sure. And, and like, is there any way that you decide on features for a mobile website or even for the desktop website saying, okay, let's draw a line here and like, we will not show this feature or like, let's, it's fine. I mean, if you want that feature, they'll download the application. If they want the feature, they'll use a desktop application. But because I, I rarely use uh, location on my browser because of the very reason that you said that it's not pretty accurate most of the time. So why not just simplify that? And because I think, uh, like, as you said, there are some advantages with what, uh, with websites. So like, why, why just kill the whole thing and, uh, or why not like maintain a smaller one or? Agreed. Um, if I got the, the question right, why can't we keep the mobile site alive and give a limited experience to our customers? Like I said in the beginning, that's not what we want to do to our customers. Our customers actually have equal right to get all parts of the experience on the site. One second. So that's what I'm saying. So experience by experience, what do you mean exactly? So there are, there are features that I cannot obviously talk about right now. Right. But the feature that we're trying to bring in to um, enable the connection that I just talked about um, to a user, between a user and a seller somewhere in the northeast part of this country, this actually requires a heavy access of native components. Mm -hmm. And if we continue to not do it on mobile side for any reason, I mean, at least we couldn't figure out how to do it, to be honest, you're actually missing out on something. The seller is actually missing out on something. But that's my choice, right? No, but the seller is also getting impacted because he wanted exposure right. to the most of the country. Just to add to that, I'll give another example. Let's say notifications, for example. Sure. Uh, I, have a, I have a phone. I have a tablet. Now, the, especially on Android, the Flipkart app does not give us the option of disabling that. So you're basically accessing my contacts, you're accessing my location, and you're giving a bunch of notifications. Now, if you're doing all of this, you can at least sync notifications. So for example, I look at a notification on the phone. Sure. Uh, three days I have not looked at my tablet. I open the tablet, I have like 10 notifications from Flipkart. Okay. Why, aren't you, why aren't you using the native features if you're talking about that? Why aren't you syncing that? Second thing, even though you want to give your uh, sell a certain features, you, when we are the ones who are also paying and we are your customers, you need to sure. also respect our wishes and say, if I ask me for permission before you access my contacts, before you read my SMS, before you look at my uh, location, it's kind of uh, rude of you to l access all of that without ever asking for my permission. Oh, that's not true, actually. 
we ask for your permission before ac we access any of this. If you say no, we won't even get into it. The platform doesn't even allow us to access, access these things without your permission. Well, there's 17 list of permissions when you install the app. The first screen you see is... So you can either install the app or you can't. So you ca if I don't install the app, I can't access the... So that is a call. That, is, that was a hard call, which is what I'm also confessing to. That was a hard call that we took by killing the, the site. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was not actually the features we wanted to give the seller. We wanted to actually give a seller uh, ability to reach out to more people. But yes, we've heard the point on the notifications point. We are fixing that. Our product team has actually taken note from our recent user surveys. People are not happy with our uh, too many notifications. Yes, we are fixing it.